I've been very grateful because here I am, I'm going to be 87 years old in a couple of months. I'm still out and about. People know you. People know me and they call me captain, which is nice. I said, God really gave me a great thing there because, you know, some of the drug pushers I played and so forth and some of the characters that were terrible, they would never even want to come close to me. But captain gives you, it's like they think you know more than you know because you played a captain. In 1935, I was four years old. I was in the kindergarten, and I did my first play. Well, the people applauded. I didn't know you got applause. It was like they liked me. Somebody likes me. From that moment on, whenever there was anything to get on the stage or something, I, I, my mother allowed me to do it. And I, I did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. Even in high school, I put the football team to do a play and they called me all these names. I didn't care. I was getting laughs, you know? And we did a play called Captain Applejack and someone saw me in that and wrote to Ithaca College. They wanted me to come up and audition for an acting scholarship at Ithaca College. And I was there for four years. And then I went to New York to make it in the big time. And I got a job at Radio City Music Hall. And then they liked me, they promoted me to the reserve seats elevator, and I got $47 a week. And then I knew I needed a hairpiece. I was auditioning for things and people laugh at me. A young guy with a bald head, I went to a place <laughs> called Sen's Brothers. <laughs> what a chutzpah. So he looked at me. He said, okay, it's uh, four or $500. I said, oh, I only make uh, 30 something dollars a week over there, 40 something dollars a week over there. I, 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 I. He said, well, come back when you get enough money. So I was going down the stairs and he said, hey kid, come back up here. He said, well, how do you like this? I had hair on my head for the first time in a couple of years. I said, wow. I mean, you know, it couldn't look like a bird nest. It wouldn't make any difference to me. It was hair. He said, you can have that for $125 like you say. I said, but, but you told me this. He said, yeah, but somebody got a new one today. He left this here, so you, you, can, you can have it. I said, wow. Okay, I said, can you tell me who it was? Andre Baruch. Oh, he was the voice of America. And he had a voice like this. It really got my career going. I got a hat full of rain because of his second hand hair piece. I did all of Lucille Ball shows years later because of that second hand hair piece. And then once on McKell's Navy, I wore it and we shot it. And it died. 1970, I had just finished doing Kelly's Heroes in Yugoslavia with Clint Eastwood and Don Rickles and Carol O'Connor, Donald Sutherland. We just want you to keep him interested for a while, that's all. Oh, man! You guys are crazy! Look, when we was in a Bocaz country, we was assaulted by them tigers. You know what I mean by assaulted, huh? Well, I mean assaulted! Why don't you knock it off with them negative waves? I came home, I started rehearsing uh, Carousel, the bang jigger and Carousel, and I got a call about Mary show. <laughs> want you for the Mary Tyler Moore pilot. Oh, I said, do you, do you know what part? He said, yeah, is a guy named Murray in there? I said, well, there sure is. And that was the beginning of incredible seven years for everybody on that show. Hi, guys. Boy, am I in trouble. What's the matter, Ted? <laughs> was fabulous. And that allowed me, uh, together with everyone else, to become a, a commodity in the summer to do summer stock, which is what I loved. But I got a call from Aaron Spelling, and they wanted me to play the captain. Love, exciting and new. They guaranteed me they'd have happy endings, three different kinds of stories. I started, and Gower Champion called me to uh, and get your gun with Debbie Reynolds in San Francisco. 
that Aaron arranged for me to have a driver every night. I'd shoot the love boat in the daytime. At about 4.30 or 5, I'd take a plane, fly it up to San Francisco. You don't want to leave a show because you don't want your understudy to go on because he'll be better than you are and you don't want that. The theater to this day has always been the most important thing. Gavin's been coming to CV Rep for quite a few years. Gavin's passion and first passion was always the stage. The theater was so exciting to me because you got one shot to do it. You can't do a retake. You're doing it. It's that one time. Most people know him as a television star and a comedic actor. But in fact, I was fascinated to watch him as a dramatic actor. I lied earlier. I didn't walk at a youth event. I shuffled with my pain. If you had to pick a favorite show that you performed in. Happy no, no doubt about it, happy hour. When you can have organic moments, like you can have in a play like that, and even raucous humor. I love sex. It was a perfect afternoon. <laughs> Your generation Someone was going to ask me of all the 80-something years I've been acting, there was that, that one moment that my character had with his son that uh, it still gets to me. Gavin has a very unique gift to connect with an audience from his heart, from his spirit. When you could put yourself, your own heart and your own soul into a character to make that become you, that's when the magic happens. There is more love here than in the biggest theaters I've ever played. And that's why actors, you talk to anybody that's played here, they want to come back. Everyone that comes here, is very taken with the quality of work, the choice of plays. This is very, very special. I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful to just be me.